Hi. He is a diving halo caddis, uh, based wholeheartedly on uh, Gary Lafontaine's uh, diving sparkle caddis and the sparkle caddis series of flies, um, using a uh, imitation of a gas bubble trapped around a, a rising caddis pupa uh, prior to emergence. Can be tied with an emergent shuck or without. Um, I've been fishing this for about two or three weeks now, midsummer, uh, in my home waters, uh, in still water, when there's a caddis about. Um, I've had very, very good success with this. I'm using a, a Timco 200R uh, nymph hook with an olive bead, just your standard 132nd bead heads. Um, or, yeah, the 130 second feet. Anyway, the small ones. Um, fished on a sink line, uh, type 2, type 3 sink line, uh, with quick strips, followed by a nice long pause to let the fly start to drift down a bit with the head down. Um, I've never heard of an emergent pupa that actually goes up. Uh, I'm going to use some Eslon. This is a Dunn. Uh, you could probably use an olive or a. Uh, uh, an olive or a, or a tan copper color. Don't think it really matters. The, the, the kicker is making sure you've got enough light uh, sort of echoing around the fly to make it look like a gas bubble. Part of that will come in a moment when you see the, uh, the underbody for this fly. Um, I'm not going to tie this with a trailing chuck. The, uh, the trick to tying the trailing chuck on this is simply to leave a few fibers of this Eslon sticking out when we, when we do the, the halo body around it, the bubble body. And uh, uh, you'll see how that works in just a minute. Um, I'm not too concerned about the underbody on this. It's going to be uh, bulky and covered up in just a minute. So we're not going to worry about that at all, a whole lot. Um, we do want to try and split uh, this Antron material. Uh, you don't need a whole lot. I'm going to trim it to uh, probably less than two inches anyway. won't be able to see it on the video, but uh, there you go. That's about how much I'm using. What I'm going to do is separate it so that there's a little bit running down the side, each side of the fly, because I'm going to want to wrap it all the way around the body in a minute. Uh, this will just help it uh, help me get it spread out so that some goes on top, some goes below, some goes you know over and around the fly as I get it closer to that tie-in point. So I'm just going to trap some of this down on one side and then trap some on the other side too, and that way I can split it all the way around the fly like a bubble. Now for the underbody, I'm using Goo Broad e dot by the way. Um, for the under underbody. What I'm going to do is use my new favorite material, uh, which is a Mirage Crystal Flash. It's a very green Crystal Flash. Interestingly enough, if you stretch it out, it turns pink and blue. So it's it's green naturally, uh, but it's got a lot of color to it. And it's considerably shinier than some of the other materials that are available um, in terms of the Crystal Flashes and things like that. So I'm going to take two or three strands. And I'm just going to lay down two or three strands with a soft loop. Uh, to form the base of the body underneath the fly. I'm going to try and tie that one in a second time because I didn't get it the first time. Now you can use more or less. It doesn't really matter when you see how we build up the body. Um, it, it, the bigger concern is getting some flash into the underbody of the fly, uh, which gives it its shimmer in the water. So I'm going to use the wonder of the rotary here to tie off my thread with just a half hitch. Get that out of the way for a moment. And I'm just going to wrap this crystal flash and build up a caddis body with the crystal flash underneath. As I rotate it forward, I'm going to just get the whole body covered to about a third of the way from the eye. Uh, we're going to be putting some material for a thorax over the top, so it's not real critical that we get that filled in. Um, caddis pupas have a fairly big body, and since we're trying to emulate a caddis pupa with a large gas bubble around its thorax, or around its abdomen rather, uh, going a little heavier on this is not a big problem. 
because uh, it will still look fairly natural. I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to look at a bug uh, underwater that's got a gas bubble around it, but you can't really see the underbody. All you really see is the reflection of uh, the air bubble around the body of the fly. So you know, we've just tied off this crystal flash. I'm going to turn the crystal flash off. It's only forming an underbody, so we don't have to worry too, too much about it getting in the way. And here comes the interesting part, and this is the this is the, the piece that makes Gary's Gary Lafontaine's uh, Sparkle Caddis so so unique is that he really emulated the physical characteristics of a of an emerging pupa with a gas bubble. Now I've used this fly uh, for about three weeks now, four weeks now, um, since I toyed with the idea of using a crystal underbody. What we want to do is, is basically lay the material, the S-line out. It's, once it's tied in, you see if you pull it tight, it will look sort of like a you know body material on the top. But if you let it flare a little bit, you get this sort of cotton candy feel around the fly. And what we want to do is, is tie it in with just a bit of that poof to it so that when we soft loop down the, uh, the thread, we're going to get this sort of bubbly look to the to the to the abdomen where uh, let's see if I can get something darker here. Um, this bubbly look to the abdomen so that you can see it's got a sort of a bubble around the actual crystal uh, because the materials are very light. It's tough to tough to really get a feel for what that looks like over the video. But um, I assure you, try it out. Uh, it's it's a really light colored fly. Um, which also has the added benefit of being really visible when you're casting, so you can duck if you're in a flow tube and you, uh, you have an errant cast. I'm going to tie in now a little bit of dubbing uh, up at the head, and I'm going to use uh, seal fur, uh, seal fur dub. Um, yeah, I still use wax. I don't know why. Some people say I shouldn't. I haven't figured out why or why not yet, so I'm still going to use it. Um, I'm using a brown seal for, um, it's really spiky and, uh, and wiry, so it sticks out a lot, it looks kind of leggy, and I think that sort of adds a little bit to the, to the body. Uh, if you wanted to, you could use a softer dubbing and tie on some uh, partridge uh, or something like that uh, as legs. Um, I found in any fly smaller than a 14, I can't tell the difference whether or not it's got partridge after sundown. And I don't know if the fish can. Maybe they can. Maybe they can't. Um, I haven't used it on this fly, and uh, it hasn't made a whole lot of difference. I'm putting a lot of dubbing on. I don't worry about it getting built up because it's it, you know building up. We're just gonna you know really seriously identify the front of the bug versus the back of the of the bug. Um, we've tied that off now, and so we've got you know a vaguely uh, uh, pupa-esque feel with a leggy front back end the body um, nicely trapped within this bubble. Um, whip finish and we're done. Assuming I can find my whip finisher. I can clean up my desk. So we're going to just whip finish this behind the bead. And that's it. We're going to Drop a little bit of head cement in uh, on the top and let it soak down through the through the goods, um, and that's it. I'm gonna pop this off. And there's a close-up of the fly, crystal body, uh, bead head, and try and prove up produces this sort of halo around the torso, around the thorax of the uh, of the pupa. Uh, which catches light in some really interesting ways underwater. Uh, Crystal Flash provides a whole lot of whole lot of glitter. So anyway, that's the uh, Davy Halo.